Welcome back, everybody, to Pop Culture Conspiracy. I'm your host, T. How are y'all doing today? And in this video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look at Cleopatra and Ice Spice. Before I hop in, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's talk in the comments, and please turn on your notifications. Okay, you guys, so I was on TikTok yesterday, and my whole For You page is just littered with videos about Cleopatra and Ice Spice. You know, everybody's taking Cleopatra's side. I was also on Insta yesterday, and Lord Jesus, like, this situation has just taken the internet by storm. So I made a short about it to, you know, say that, hey, I think this is the end of Ice Spice. Like, this is probably the last nail on her coffin. But when I was making that short, I thought to myself, hey, these people have, like, Egyptian names. Like, one person is named Cleopatra. And the other is named Isis. And I was like, there's something more to this story. So I started doing research and lo and behold, I came across like a bunch of stuff and I'm going to get into that here. But what I always knew about these two, I always knew this was black and white chessboard because when Ice Spice first came out, I noticed she had a best friend. Cleopatra. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, her friend's name's Cleopatra. Hmm. I don't know if that's this young lady's government name. It does not matter. But I always knew that was like a race play because I don't know. I just thought to myself, this is really interesting how this girl who is just so, 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 so light, not saying that it can't happen in real life. I know there are many, many people in real life who are fair skinned or white who have a black best friend. It is possible. It is a legit relationship that can happen. I get that. But this is the industry. So nothing is as it seems. So I always knew that that was just a little bit strange. How, again, they have this person who is so, so fair. And she's got like this bestie who is brown skin or dark skin. And her bestie isn't like in a spotlight that much. Like she's, she's you know, she's there. We notice her, but she's not, again, not nearly as popular as light-skinned person. So I always knew that that was black and white chessboard play because that's just the industry. That's how they do this. But more than never now, now that I've done my research into this, I'm like, yes, this is, this is Illuminati chess. Let's talk about it. So I want to go back to the situation with and tie it in with Cleopatra and Isis from ancient Egypt. So Cleopatra well, as we know, was like one of the last pharaohs of Egypt, super, super famous. But come to find out, Cleopatra used to energy harvest the goddess Isis. She used to dress up as Isis, and um, she was thought to be like the physical reincarnation of Isis and, you know, all this other stuff. And that is because when you look at um, monarchies and you know, royal leaders and any leaders of a country, how do they get their power? How do they become royalty in the first place? Like what makes them more special than the average person? Like why are they um, given this power to rule over people? Well, when you do your research, it is because those families used to say, oh, we were appointed or anointed by God. Like we're here, we were put in power by God. You know, this, this entity, this God energy put me in this position. That's how they used to justify their power and their right to rule over others. Because again, otherwise, why you and not us? And so they used to say that. And that is why there used to be no separation between church and state. Because religion and government used to be one because, again, the people running the country had to, you know, use, oh, this God energy, again, put me in this position to rule over you guys. So the idea of a separation between church and state is pretty newfangled. So now that we have that out of the way, again, um, Cleopatra used to energy harvest goddess Isis. Isis is the mother of Horus when we look up like the Egyptian like creation myth. Um, Horus is the antichrist. Peep that. Okay and we are in the election year and Kamala is 
you know, the lotus flower and out of the, out of the lotus flower comes the sun god Ra. And again, it's here to bring this antichrist energy. Again, Kamala's a female energy. We have Ra, the male energy and the female and the male come together to create the sun. And, um, they have their own like antichrist baby who was like, again, in place to, rival the true son jesus christ so this is what this is all about this is this is very strategic this is script this is hermetic theater this is by design so we have cleopatra real cleopatra calling upon goddess isis now i'm going to take that another level and connect this with black and white chessboard so it is highly disputed just like with ice spice was cleopatra black what was her ethnicity? Cleopatra was Greek. She had like Greek ancestry, a lot of Greek ancestry. She was a mixed woman from what we're to believe or what we're told. Um, when we see pictures of her, she's typically like lighter skinned. And that was also why she had to, again, call upon this dark energy of Isis because let's talk about that too. Isis is a fallen angel god. So she's well above human concepts of race and all of that like she doesn't really identify with a race because she's a again entity from another realm she's just a dark realm she's just again a fallen angel energy all these fallen egyptian gods are fallen angels okay so they are dark energy just by nature just by you know design behavior vibration all of that they are a dark energy there is dark and light and so Cleopatra, again, this light-skinned woman was calling upon this dark energy to justify her reign over the dark people of Egypt. Because before Egypt was Egypt, Egypt was Kemet or Kemet, which means black or black land or like black soil, black dirt. And when you look at pictures of um, Egyptian people, when you see Egyptian hieroglyphs, and when you go to any museum where they're showing again what e Egyptian people looked like, you know, back in Egyptian, um, ancient Egypt, they are what, um, you know, modern day again, black people look like. They are brown, dark skinned people with Afro textured hair because again, they're they're black. They were black people from the black land. And so this light skinned Greek woman, this Macedonian woman, definitely had to justify her reigning over these dark-skinned people. And so she was, again, doing her best to embody an energy harvest and invoke this goddess Isis to, again, justify her power, justify her reign, and kind of consecrate her in office. So this is what we're seeing with Cleopatra and Ice Spice, because Ice Spice is, again, this light-skinned Latina, We've been trying to figure out, okay, is she really black? You know, she's wearing an Afro wig. That's a wig. She's wearing an Afro wig. Um, she's twerking. She's saying the N-word, you know. And those are all things that they want you to believe make somebody black. They want you to believe that. That's why Lotto is running around, again, parading and cosplaying as a black girl from Atlanta. Because, you know, the people in power now... We want you to believe that black culture is rap music, saying the N-word, twerking, wigs, and just pure debauchery. Like, that's what they want black people to identify with as their culture. When that's not black culture. That's, you know, that's just degeneracy. That's, that's not supposed to be the culture. But that's what they want black people to, again, identify with as their culture. So we have I Spice you know, doing all of these low vibrational things and then changing her style to mimic or imitate her bestie Cleopatra, who really did have the Y2K aesthetic. And what has that done? That has called to, that has called to, cat, catapulted, excuse me, catapulted Ice Spice into this next level of like, you know, fame and, you know, aesthetic where people again want to look like her, want to copy her, want to embody her because she's been energy harvesting a black woman the entire time. You know, Cleopatra called her out when she said, you know, you started off wearing Jordans and bodysuits, which is true. There's, you know, receipts to prove that. But what does she do? She changes her aesthetic. And as she changes and completely hijacks this Y2K vibe, 
she's now again moved into this next level of fame and you know like that's that's just that, that's what she's taking with her as she's risen to mainstream success because back when she was like releasing the song no clarity and nobody knew of who she was and even the song munch like she had like this again bronx aesthetic and then as she again becomes more and more popular she energy harvests more and more of cleopatra's style and aesthetic and that has again been her what claim to fame energy harvesting um, a black woman, an actual undeniable black woman. So again, the light pulling from the dark for validation, vindication, justification of its influence over who? Black people. Because again, Ice Spice is not being pushed to Latino people. She's not being pushed to white people. She's being marketed to black people, marketed as black, again, making rap, twerking, saying the N-word, Afro wig, all of this stuff. So she can influence black people, just like when we saw that in or when it was happening during, again, um, the actual Queen Cleopatra's um, reign in ancient Egypt, a light person pulling upon the dark to rule over the dark. So we are just watching, again, Egyptian script here, ancient Egyptian hermetic theater script. Um, so that's how I'm going to tie that in with, again, that black and white chessboard, you know, Again, when it comes to Cleopatra, and let's talk about Ice Spice, um, Cleopatra the Queen and Ice Spice, Black people are under the PSYOP, and everybody is, the PSYOP of, again, Black and White Chessboard, where if you are a little bit Black or a drop of Black or mixed with Black, you get to be claimed as Black. That's why there's all this dispute over the real Cleopatra's um, race. You know, again, Black people want to claim her as Black, when she really wasn't black because of black and white chessboard. A little bit of black, you know, we believe makes you black. That That's what, again, one drop rule during slavery, like, you know, was pushing. Oh, one drop of black, you're black. And that is not true. Um, being mixed with black doesn't make you black. Um, you know, these days it's like, well, what does make you black? That's a whole question in itself. That's a whole discussion in itself. But just how there was all of this, like, um, and there's always been this like big racial debate over was Cleopatra black and what did she really look like and all this other stuff. That is the same conversation being had around Ice Spice. Is she really black? And, you know, can she really claim that she's black? And how much black is she? And there's like this big racial debate around Ice Spice. So again, we're just really watching hermetic theater in real time. Now, I want to take this another level and talk about record labels and how I believe that this whole takedown is um, nothing but orchestrated mess by Atlantic because Ice Spice is sound, is she signed to, um, she's signed to Atlantic, which is under Warner. Ice Spice was signed to, or signed under 10K Projects by Elia Grange. Elia Grange is the son of Lucian Grange, again, the head of like Universal or, you know, again, Atlantic, Warner, like just all these, just like one big pyramid scheme. And where do you think pyramid scheme came from? Ancient Egypt, <laughs> because that's why they have the pyramids, pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, like it's all connected because, um, because like, it's all about how many souls can you get? Like, you know how MLMs work again, pyramid schemes, you know, if I get a soul and then you are under me, I get your soul and then you go get more souls. I keep rising as, as you work under me to go grab more people. So it's like this big, again, this big scheme that's happening. But Nicki Minaj did say that labels are going bankrupt trying to like take her down, trying to replace her. And while I think that that is definitely true, I think labels are just struggling anyway. I think they're just going through it, okay? Because the economy is bad. We are headed deep into a depression. Please do not believe that we are still in recession territory. We are headed into depression territory we are like at the we are right in that zone between recession and depression we are headed further and further into depression especially as kamala she's already been put in place again this is an election year 
I'm trying to tie this in for you. This is an election year. And Kamala keeps telling you guys, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this and that and this and that. And she is. But it's not going to look like what you think it's going to look like. Because she's selling it to you like it's actually going to help you and you believe her and all this other stuff. But that's not what's really going to happen. She's going to do some of those things, but it's not going to be to your betterment. It's going to be to your detriment. And so I believe that she will get in office. And when she does, they're going to, again, she's going to say, do what she said she was going to do. And that is going to trigger a full on depression. It's going to be bad. So let's just keep that in mind here. The economy is bad. People don't have money like they used to. If uh, you're rapping right now, unless you're Nikki, Drake, or Kendrick, you're not moving units, okay? You're just not. Lotto, JT, Ice Spice, Megan, Sexy Red, anybody else, if I didn't name you, you really not moving units. You're not moving units right now. And so labels don't have any more money for people who ain't making no money. Like all the agendas, all the bullshit, it stops because they don't have the expendable cash to keep trying to push your ass. Like they just don't. Okay, let's, let me tie this in. Let me really wrap this up for you guys with a bow. Um, rappers don't get as much play as pop stars. And no, it's not all about music and talent and all of that. If it was about music and talent and sales, then we would actually have more talented artists making much better music. This is about pushing a program. But what I'm trying to say is they don't have expendable cash to push the program right now. It's either you're really making us money or you're not. They've put a lot of money into iSpice a lot to blow her up to as big as they have as fast as they have they put millions into her and of course she's not making any money back her album was trash and you know people ain't really paying to see her like that like i spice is vulgar and explicit so you don't really hear her when you're down to the mall and when you're down to the dental waiting room and when you're down to the medical office and when you're down to the Planned Parenthood or whatever the hell you be at, you don't really hear her constantly playing. When you're in the grocery store, you know what I'm saying? You don't just hear Ice Spice playing. You don't. Okay? So they don't have any money right now to be putting into an artist who's not making money back and they don't have the money to push her agenda anymore that's what i'm trying to say they just don't they don't have that extra cash laying around um warner and atlantic they all just did like a big merger and restructuring i want to say restructuring i know like 10k projects is like under um under atlantic under warner you know and all that again 10k projects run by elliot grange that's the son of lucian grange who's like another music exec, like just again, all in the family, but um, which is again, proving bloodline, the 13 bloodlines that run this world, peep that, okay. Um, but they don't have all this money anymore to like push Ice Spice's program. There's a lot of artists who are about to be swept up, even over there at Rock Nation, they just did layoffs. And, um, you know, why do you see, again, Beyonce doing her best to push every product under the sun? We've never seen Beyonce push anything this hard but music. She usually just pushes music. But now she's selling hair products and selling liquor and selling, you know, clothes and selling perfume and all. Why? Why? Because they need the damn money. They need some tangible income. Yes, she just had a successful tour, but you got to break a bunch of people off. You got to break off lights and sound and the DJ and the dancers. Like, it's a lot of money to go on tour. Yes, she had a good take home, but this is Beyonce knows. This woman has a lot of bills. And again, her, her husband is running a record label where, again, their biggest artist, Rihanna, ain't making no more music. 
you know, they're making money off of Fenty, but they got a bunch of other artists who they just loaned out money to who they got to float. Like, again, Megan Thee Stallion, they put a lot of money into Megan, trying to make her bigger than what she is. And is she making an ROI like that? No. That Tory situation really backfired. Like, I always said that was a ritual gone wrong. It didn't go how they wanted it to go. So you've got labels, again, doing layoffs. Rock Nation has done layoffs. Again, Atlantic, they've had people leaving. They've been restructuring. They've had to move people around and all of this. Labels are going through it right now. They don't have money to push your agenda. They just don't. You got to either be making money for real or you got to go. And I think that that is what's really going on here. I think... I Spice has, you know, cost uh, Atlantic a lot of money. And I think she's not making really a, even a fraction of that back. And so they are like, okay, we got to, we got to, we got to cut her off. She's got to go. So how do we make her go? We're going to do a humiliation ritual. We're going to like, you know, um, bash her into irrelevancy. Okay, the Nikki situation happened with the text messages. That really hurt Ice Spice. Really, because the Barb's are loyal and they buy music and they buy merch and they buy tickets. They really love Nikki. So the Barb's are not messing with her. That hurt her. Those texts got leaked. That hurt her. The album was trash. The Y2K album, a mess. How your first EP better than your album? You know what I'm saying? Something about that don't make no sense. How do you musically regress? And I get it. Artists typically sometimes they'll have like a crappy like sophomore or junior project, but it's just like Ice Spice, you too new in a game to be um, screwing up so bad so early. So that was just strange to me too. I was like, damn, this album is bad. How'd they let it get released? Because they've been working against her. Just like I've been saying Rock Nation working against Megan. I've been saying that. I've been saying that. So, okay, the Nikki situation happens. That's that's a dig, you know what I'm saying, to your career. That one, 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 you know, um dirt or oh, one shovel of dirt over your grave. Then your album was trash. People really on your ass. Then all of this mess comes out with the prayer video. You getting all uncomfortable and all out of body when it's time for you to pray. But like I always say, every time it's time for you to twerk and throw that ass back, oh, you just all good and in your element. So they let that video go viral. You guys, when labels get hold of information that can make their artists look bad, they have a way of wiping it from the internet. They will take your page, take your account. They will get rid of your ass. If you speak out against their artists, they will get rid of you. They let that video of Ice Spice in that prayer situation go viral. Not everybody turned off. Everybody looking at her funny. You know what I'm saying? That that was also a really bad look. That prayer video going viral, not a good look. Then, this situation with Cleopatra, nail in the coffin. Oh, you getting exposed as being colorist? You getting exposed as being a bad friend? You know, you getting exposed for... You know, all of this mistreatment of this woman that she was doing, supposedly, allegedly, that, you know, people believe, people believe Cleopatra. People believe her because it's a story that unfortunately a lot of us can resonate with. We've all had a fake friend that was doing us dirty, treating us bad, doing little snake, sneak, sly shit on the low. You know what I mean? We've all had that experience. So it's a very relatable story and it did what it needed to do. Now this shit is going completely viral. Everybody's in her comments, sympathizing with her, empathizing with her, commenting, making skits. They let the, sh they, the shit is so viral. It's all over the internet. And I, that's why I said in, in the short that I made, I said, this is, this is what's going to get her out of here. This is what's going to do it. Like Atlantic wants her ass out of here. Like they, 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 and they had to, they had to figure out something that was going to do it. Do I think that Cleopatra is about to like blow up as this mega artist? No, I don't. I don't. I think Cleopatra is again is being used by the industry too. And um she's doing what they sent her out to do. Make her ass irrelevant. Get her out of here so we don't gotta put any more money in her. We want to end this program. We want to end the Ice Spice program and end the Ice Spice agenda. And you're gonna be the one to do it.
you're going to be the one to end her ass. Because again, if if the real Queen Cleopatra, the real Pharaoh Cleopatra, if she was calling upon the dark energy of Isis, and now we have, again, the names flipped, but the situation the exact same, when that dark energy, that entity is done with your ass, is done with your ass. If you were the one, again, calling upon this energy for power and, and influence and success, when you piss that energy off, that this is how satanic and demonic contracts work. The moment you enter a contract with the fallen angel, they have power. And when you piss that energy off, it takes back all of the power that it gave you. And that's what we're seeing here. Um, Cleopatra is taking back her power and ending Ice Spice. That's why, again, in the prayer video, it just showed how demonic Ice Spice was because she is in what cahoots with the spirits. And they, and the people, and people who run these labels, they in cahoots with the same spirits. And when they're like, yo, we got to get her out of here, they're going to call upon them spirits in this bitch. And now Ice Spice is on her way out of here. So the Ice Spice program is done. I know a lot of y'all didn't like her anyway. Please believe she definitely um, has been here longer than I thought she was going to be. And it was nice to get to know her, but girl, go ahead, pack it up, and head back to the Bronx. Y'all, let's talk in the comments. What do y'all think? Hit y'all in the next one. Bye.